Welcome to Pachera Talks channel and today we are continuing with Zero Trust and today we'll talk about securing data with Zero Trust. They're like all the elements that they are talking one by one and today it's time to secure data. Well, we all know protecting data is one of the primary responsibilities of uh, security and compliance teams. Whatever is happening is happening for data. Applications are running because of data. Customers using it also for data and generating lots of data. Nobody wants to hack into your system and sit there, but wants your data. Either use it or destroy it or encrypt it for money, but data is the center part of all. Hence, data should remain protected while at rest in use and when it leaves the endpoints, applications, infrastructure, and networks that are within the control of our organization. To ensure protection, data should be invent inventoried, classified, labeled, and where appropriate, encrypted. And these are the three core elements of a data protection strategy. The very first thing is we should know what we are protecting. Know your data. If you don't know what sensitive data you have on premises or in cloud, you can't adequately protect it. Because before protecting, we should know what what are we protecting? Because any organization must have enormous amount of data and applying same policies everywhere will hamper work and not applying policies will left the sensitive data vulnerable. Hence, we need to discover data across entire organization and classify all data by sensitivity level. We need to protect data and prevent data loss. That's our second point. <clears throat> we protect sensitive data by data protection policies, which help us to label and encrypt data or block oversharing. That's how we will protect it, by labeling and encrypting as per the label and block oversharing. We need to ensure only authorized users are able to access the data. The very first principle of zero trust, right? Verify explicitly. So we need to we need to uh, ensure only authorized users are able to access data, uh, even when data travels outside our corporate environment. And the last but not the least, we discussed many times that monitoring is the integral part of everything. And here again, we should continuously monitor sensitive data to detect policy violation and risky user behavior. Why we want that? Because according to the monitoring information, this will allow us to take appropriate action, such as revoking access, blocking users and refining protection policies. When data and sensitive content is understood, labeled, and classified, now organization can inform and enforce policy decisions to block or remove uh, emails, attachments, documents. Organization can encrypt files as per these sensitivity uh, labels or sensitive labels on endpoints. 
auto classify content with sensitivity labels through policy and machine learning track and monitor sensitive content using policies as a content travel inside and outside uh, your digital estate so these are the things will help us design the overall strategy for the protection but if we see <clears throat> how actually it was happening before zero trust before zero trust many organizations were doing things differently which were not appropriate and that's the reason zero trust framework came into the picture so how exactly it was happening well access uh, is governed by the perimeter control that we have already established many times uh, in old ways and it wasn't on data sensitivity inside the perimeter everything is good to go not cool not good sensitivity levers were applied manually manually means prone to error that means inconsistent data classification but do not worry we got zero trust framework and in order to implement zero trust framework Microsoft recommends some objectives. Let's see what are those. Here you see the objectives that we need to achieve. Access decisions are governed by encryption. Well, what does that mean? It simply means protect your most sensitive data with encryption to restrict access to content that sensitivity labels are applied to. When a document or email is encrypted, access to the content is restricted so that it is encrypted both at rest and in transit. Remains encrypted no matter where it resides, inside or outside the organization, even if the file is renamed can be decrypted only by the users authorized by the labels encryption settings. So what we use to achieve this kind of uh, strategy, this kind of encryption and access on user authorization, we could use Azure Rights Management Service, which is a part of Azure Information Protection. Now, <clears throat> data is automatically classified and labeled because we already established in old ways manual classification was inconsistent so to avoid issues with data not being labeled properly or labels being applied inaccurately automate data classification we can use again who is the hero of this picture aip azure information protection we can use AIP scanner to automatically classify and protect files. Azure Information Protection Unified Labeling Scanner is being renamed as Microsoft Purview Information Protection Scanner, yes. At the same time, configuration can be done through Azure Portal and the Compliance Portal as well. And it is in preview, this configuration thing. It's in preview, but it will be in purview soon. Enterprises have vast amounts of data that can be challenging to adequately label and classify. Once we have completed first two steps, the next step is to use machine learning for smarter classification yes microsoft 365 provides three ways to classify content including manually and with automated pattern trainable classifiers it's in preview but it is gonna be ga very soon trainable classifiers are a third method well suited to content that isn't easily identified by manual or automated pattern matching methods. <clears throat> That's the reason we explained at the very beginning, 
enterprises has a lot of vast or enormous amount of data. So forget the manual and forget this uh, automated pattern matching methods. We need something like trainable classifiers. A classifier learns how to identify a type of content by looking at hundreds of examples of the content you are interested in classifying, just like any other machine learning task. We start feeding it examples that are definitely in the category. Once it process those, we test it by giving it a mix of both uh, matching and non-matching examples. The classifier then makes predictions as to whether any given item falls into the category you're building. We then confirm its results, sorting out positives, negatives, false positives, and false negatives to help increase the accuracy of the predictions, just like any other machine learning. And when we publish the train classifier, it sorts through items in locations like SharePoint, Exchange, OneDrive, and classify the content. <clears throat> now, we have everything in place. We got the data identified. We got the data discovered, classified, labeled. Uh, <clears throat> now, the now, we need to prevent data leakage through DLP policies, DLP policies. And to comply with business standards and industry regulations, organizations must protect sensitive information and prevent its unwanted or mistakenly disclosure. That's how it usually happens. Sensitive information can include uh, financial data or PI, personal identifiable information, PII, such as credit card numbers, social security, or health records. With DLP or data loss prevention policy in the Office 365 uh, Security and Compliance Center, we can identify, monitor, and automatically protect sensitive information across Office 365. We can create and manage DLP policies on the data loss prevention page in the Microsoft per view compliance portal. So <clears throat> these are the objectives that if we achieve these objectives, we are aligning ourselves with the zero trust framework and how Azure or Microsoft helping us in doing so? Well, right here is the answer. With the help of Microsoft Information Protection, this is something which will guide us, help us, to achieve these objectives. We talked about <clears throat> all of these. And in the last, this is all we needed to talk about in this uh, securing data with zero trust. Microsoft Information Protection is a comprehensive flexible, integrated, and extensible approach to protecting sensitive data. So with this, let's end this video and meet in another one with the next element to protect our organization with zero trust. And just to remind, these are, these are the elements. We talked identity, endpoints, data, app is done, our infra and network are are left that we'll talk in upcoming videos. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.